for 30 times, SoFi Technologies stock plunging 13.5% here in real time. Jenny, 834. But wow, what a year. Because this year, which has had two days, the stock is down 16%. So year to date, just the last two sessions. But up over the last 52 weeks, 85%. All I know then is this is volatile. It is volatile, especially when you zoom out and you look at the last three years, because this was one of these names that surged during the pandemic and then fell 2022, then came back to life in 2023, but still well off all time highs. And we previ previously has, have discussed this name. The enthusiasts in SoFi are very, very vocal. But unfortunately today, this analyst more pessimistic as we did get a downgrade and a price target reduction to $6 and 50 cents. So here to tell us now more on perhaps the outlook and some growth prospects for SoFi into the new year. I'd like to welcome in George Tillis, Senior Markets Correspondent for the network. So George, I know that from the analyst whisperings, this has been seen as a beneficiary of the student loan resumption payments, but this analyst thinks that perhaps their luck has run out here into the new year. Well, I mean, I, I think if you look at KBW's call on SoFi, I think the student loan resumption of payments was a, a catalyst going back uh, into October. And in fact, if you look back in May, the stock took a run or made a run to the upside because uh, the Supreme Court shot down the Biden administrations on loan forgiveness. I think uh, despite the fact that uh, if you look at, uh, you know, repayment of uh, student loans, there's actually a higher default rate. And that actually might be weighing on uh, some of the prospects for SoFi going forward. So uh, KBW has actually downgraded the stock and they moved their target Price to 650 from 750, and I think there's still some structural challenges with uh, SoFi's uh, business. Altogether, it's not a bad business. I just think the competitive landscape for big digital financial services, banking, insurance, and brokerage is quite um, quite large. Uh, you know, there's major banks that provide very similar services. Some of the major commercial banks. I think SoFi's uh, niche really was the student loan market. Uh, but they started that first and they started moving into private banking and, and uh, of course, depository banking. But I think the competition right now is very, very robust. And I think if you consider the uh, the elements of the price action, it's very volatile. And it should be because you're dealing with a financial institution that's very technology driven, uh, but it's not making money. And, and that's important because that's why you're going to see, you know, major volatile swings in the stock. I mean, it made a huge run up uh, it, since early November, along with the market. It more than doubled off around the five, five, five or six dollar base, close to uh, eleven dollars. Uh, but it's coming back pretty significantly because interest rates are starting to rise again. The market's obviously not favoring growth stocks, uh, at least so far this year. Uh, and again, uh, what's going to happen, I think, going forward into this year is irrespective of growth prospects, Profitability is going to matter. And if you look at the profitability for SoFi last year, the estimates, including Q4, which they haven't reported yet, are a loss of 35 cents. Now, next year, they're expecting to earn six cents, but it's a very low bar. And anytime you're flirting with uh, adjusted profits around break even, you're going to see volatile price action. That's just my my observational view of of how these stocks trade. It's right around these break even levels, very volatile. Now, I'm going to go and say if you if you look at the sales of the business at a one point nine billion dollars, um, you know, last year, uh, that's still growing faster than what it was back in 2017. But they lost four hundred thirty three million dollars on one point nine billion in sales. Now, if you go back to 2017, that was the last time they made money. Uh, they made forty nine million dollars on five hundred million dollars in sales. So since then, they've been losing money. They caught a big run up during the pandemic. But you can see that over these multiple years, the stock has been drifting lower because if you have a negative earnings yield, that's going to suppress your stock price. And so they have to do things like cut costs, uh, maybe some marketing expenses. Um, and I think the, the student loan resumption was a was a, a price catalyst or a stock movement catalyst. But uh, you have to consider default rates, I think, that are, that are quite large on those those uh, student loans right now. George, this stock is extremely actively traded as well. I saw something over 60 mm -hmm. million uh, shares trading today, and that really isn't uh, that tremendously different than where it's kind of normally at. It's a little bit elevated. Granted, the stock's down 13%, but it kind of has what I would describe as a triple threat as to explain that why. It's got familiarity 
This is something that many people uh, maybe even have uh, you know, uh, their loans with or familiar with the product. It's a low stock price, it's accessible in that sense, and it's highly volatile. I think in names like Snap that are kind of the same boat, uh, at times uh, in the past, AMD fit that camp. Of course, AMD's graduated into uh, a bigger company at this point. But George, with that in mind, knowing that there's a lot of activity taking place, probably a lot of short-term trading and active trading and management around uh, this particular stock, you've talked in the past about when companies are transitioning from losing to profitability. This looks like based off estimates, it's on that uh, kind of doorstep here. Um, talk to us about what you've seen when companies make that transition, how that can, can impact kind of trading and, and price performance. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, the best news in stocks come off of when the stock is actually losing money and their losses are not as bad. In other words, they're improving. When you get to that break even level, you can see large gaps in the stock price. So let's say, you know, you know, next quarter they're going to earn three cents and they come out double that. You can see a big move to the upside. So when you reach that break even level on an adjusted basis, that's where you see, you know, these uh, these moves that are up and down. And that's contingent upon, again, if it moves higher, profits are going to be consistent and growing going forward. And I think that's one of the challenges. I mean, SoFi is not a bad business. It's just struggling in a, in a competitive landscape. And it's trying to find a niche uh, in an environment where, again, all financial institutions are struggling. And, and so I think that's the structural challenge. But it is a trading vehicle. It's got high short interest, around 15 percent. It's low price. Uh, which doesn't necessarily mean, you know, it's cheap, uh, but it does for maybe some retail traders who are looking for cheap price stocks and volatile stocks to trade. And that's really what this is. Uh, but again, if they, if they demonstrate some consistent profitability, whether it's cost cutting or, you know, acquiring other businesses and so forth, you're going to still see this volatile price action, which is great for traders, but maybe not necessarily for long-term investors. Yeah, and George, I think that you put that so well, is that there is such a strong following behind this name from I know just tracking it on various social media platforms. The enthusiasts and so yeah. far are very, very passionate. And I'm sure because of this volatility, unfortunately today to the downside, but we could, I'm sure, in some time expect that volatility to the upside. But we will leave it there. A really great breakdown on SoFi. George Tillis, Senior Markets Correspondent for the Network.